Welcome to the show from the Jackson YMCA CEO, Sean Atello, and from the Jackson County, Michigan Historical Society, Linda Haas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us. Yeah, great to have you here. Linda, I, I uh, saw that the most recent thing the society did was unveil the new historical markers yeah. at the train station. We were so happy with that turnout. It was such a busy day. It was museum day, but still there were about 80 people that showed up to help us celebrate the, you know, just the historical significance of that beautiful landmark that's still with us today. And so we, our historical society loves, I think, honoring these wonderful landmarks in Jackson, like the Y, like the train depot, and just bringing out the hidden history so people can enjoy it more. Well, thanks to Linda. Uh, Linda, has been single-handedly responsible for getting these <laughs> giant green State of Michigan State. historical <laughs> signs erected in Jackson. I know yeah. of at least four that yeah. you've had a hand in, right? Right, yes, and um, I think that it's just another way of, um, we have our local county markers, of course, the Jackson County, Michigan Historical Society, but the state markers have a um, just a higher burden of proof, and of course they're cast iron, so they're just about indestructible. <laughs> and um, it just has a little bit of a bigger show. Um, so we're just very grateful to bring out these hidden gems. Uh, most recently, the, the Poor House just uh, will be getting a state historical marker coming up here on wow. County Farm Road. So that's one coming, but the train depot was very, very special one to unveil. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were surprised that we didn't already have one there. I know, it's <laughs> overdue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good job. Thank you. Uh, very, uh, very important accomplishments mm -hmm. by the society and, and you personally. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for doing that. My, a labor of love. Well, mm -hmm. I know it's a, it's a lot of work. The, as Linda said, there's a higher burden of proof for it's getting these markers, level. and you've got to uh, provide a ton of research and documentation right. and paperwork, and I know a lot went into doing all of that for all of those markers. About a year worth of research. You can't make a mistake on a cast iron marker. You can't erase it, so it's got to be right. <laughs> yeah. The pressure. Well, well today uh, we have you here together because um, one of our historical treasures is the Jackson YMCA. Yes, yeah. So we are so thankful uh, to Linda and to the Historical Society for the beautiful piece that they did um, documenting the life of our Jackson YMCA. Um, I, I learned from it. Um, I knew our Y had a really rich history in our community, but it was fun to take that, take that walk down memory lane um, guided by Linda and her team. And it's been such an incredible tool to use within our organization mm -hmm. uh, with our board of directors and onboarding new employees. Um, the ladies who attended our tea and totes uh, fundraising event recently had the opportunity to to preview the video and we've just had an overwhelmingly positive response uh, from people that love the why uh, to have the opportunity to learn more about the mission and the history in Jackson. How far back does our why go? Well you'll find out in the video <laughs> but our, our why is over 125 years. Um, we opened our doors in 1864 uh, we've been on our current site, um, the construction on the current site, I believe, started in 1960, um, and, and the doors opened in 1962, but um, going back over 125 years in Jackson. And the uh, next chapter begins in 2023 with groundbreaking for the, the new Y. Yes, we're so excited, and that'll be the next phase of Linda's video, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, watching that all unfold. We actually have a clip. Perfect. I'm excited for, for you to share it. Let's take a look at the history of the Jackson YMCA. Today's Jackson YMCA is the descendant of an organization that has served Jackson since 1868. The original founders of the Young Men's Christian Association may not have quoted today's core values of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility, nor did founders quote today's mission statement of putting Christian principles into practice through programs that build a healthy spirit, mind, and body for all. But founders accomplished those goals just the same through meetings and programs in various buildings throughout downtown Jackson for over 150 years. To accommodate popular demand and maintain an updated facility, 
By 2024, the Jackson YMCA expects to complete construction on a combination of new build and redevelopment for an expanded facility at the Wesley Street location. The changes will result in expanded services, classes, and programs, just to name a few benefits. CEO Shauna Tello describes the focus, challenges, and success of the capital campaign in this way, quote, the Jackson's YMCA capital campaign has focused on stewardship, transparency, long-term sustainability, evolving relevance, and greater impact in the service of people in and around Jackson. We've raised more money for the YMCA capital campaign than any other Y in the state of Michigan. Despite the challenges of fundraising and operating during a pandemic, we have succeeded because we're nimble, adapting our plans, programs, and services to the needs of Jackson and because our mission remains relevant. In serving all, our diversity is our strength. YMCA investors and those we serve understand who we are and appreciate the impact we have in our community. Nothing brings people together like the Y, and no organization will work harder to build a healthy spirit, mind, and body for all. Cool, so there's more. Oh, there's a lot more. Yeah, yeah the, the pictures are fantastic. That, that was my favorite part of it, seeing some of the pictures of the old facilities over the years, the facility in Cortland, and um, the, the uh, discussion of some of the early programs that the Y provided, reading programs and feeding programs and um, Bible studies for people at risk and just a, a lot. It's really uplifting to learn um, more about the diversity of the programming. And we've really learned firsthand in the last um, three years, I would say, how important it is that the YMCA be nimble and able to pivot based on the needs of the com community. And uh, particularly going through the COVID pandemic, we were able to shift our focus while our doors were closed under the state mandate to do food distribution, homework distribution, uh, provide showers for people. Um, and it's just another page in that history mm -hmm. of um, how the Y has been able to meet people where they are and, and provide the services that they need at that particular moment in time. Yeah, it's really amazing. And uh, I think about in my um, sister's town in North Carolina, uh, their Y closed mm -hmm. for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. put a chain up in front of, mm -hmm. and their church closed. Uh, closed off the park. So what our organizations like the Y did uh, mm -hmm. didn't happen in, in a lot of other places. Linda, as you did the research for this, uh, was there anything that surprised you? Yes, there really was quite a few things that surprised me. One of the early supporters, um, very early supporters in the, in the mid 1800s was uh, Melvin McGee, who was an Underground Railroad activist. And I think he brought that um, care and concern for maybe the least of these or for, for people in need of a safe place to gather to other organizations. He brought that with him to the Y. So there's that interesting connection between the Underground Railroad and, and the Y in terms of the founder. Um, but I also, like Shauna said, I was so surprised at how the Y adapted over the decades to the different needs of the community. Um, they, after World War II, they offered dormitories for returning servicemen because there was a need for men coming home. They hadn't found a job yet. They couldn't pay rent. Where were they going to stay? They've served their country admirably. So the Y opened their doors for dormitories uh, for these men. And just to see it, it like uh, Shauna was saying, pivoting for the needs of, this, of the community um, was very interesting to watch it progress over the decades. Interestingly, when the Y first began, it was just a reading room. Just magazines, newspapers, a Bible, because hmm. part of the, the job was to uplift the spirits, just a reading room. And if you look at it now, I mean, my goodness, swim programs, um, you know, just, just a, such a wide variety. It has come so far from, from where it was. But those reading rooms were important because a lot of the um, youth that flocked to the cities to work were getting lost in the shuffle, were, you know, finding vices to get involved in, and they needed safe places, and the founder uh, George Williams in England realized that, and that was the goal, to provide a safe place where people could be uplifted. And that need has transformed over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it started in England, mm -hmm. yeah. like mm -hmm. the Salvation Army, right. yes. which is another uh, part yeah. of our history that 
Yeah. Uh, you discovered the Connects. train station. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how much of the early um, history, particularly the last half of the 19th century, yeah. was connected in some way to the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. yeah. There wasn't much of Jackson it did not impact. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is interesting when you look at the, the newspapers, uh, churches, um, yeah, you can, the YMCA with the early founders, it just, it, a lot, these people, uh, these trailblazers that were involved mm -hmm. in it were also involved in so many other things that it just kind of uh, rippled out there in many different ways. I have to give a shout out in that, in that clip that we just saw. Um, while our historical society sponsored th the video, and it was actually Maurice Emhoff's idea to come up with a local history showcase, JTV produced it. So, and they did such a great job. So I just want to add that. Well, thank you. And where can people see the whole video? Is it available? Has it been released yet? It's well, it's available right now on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. But we show it um, at various events. We use it for all of our staff onboarding, um, for onboarding our board members, mm -hmm. and you know various community events. It's been a great resource for us. Nice. And uh, thanks to the. Society, they've actually sponsored several videos about Jackson history that mm -hmm. uh, we've been um, honored to collaborate with. Yeah, the society absolutely. Honor. Thank you. There, thank you. How does uh, the RY fit in, uh, you know, chronologically in the history of the, the Y? Are we one of the early ones? We are, yes, we're one of the early ones, and then from there, um, you know, it's, it's all over the place. There, there are new YMCAs being built every day, but we are, we are one of the early ones. Um, many YMCAs in large cities even have an association of YMCAs as they continue to build based on need. Um, we're unique in that we are a standalone YMCA. Um, there's a small association of standalone YMCAs mm. um, because most now are part of an association and um, but we've been really well um, governed, really mm -hmm. well operated over the years, and so there hasn't been a need to merge with an association uh, because ours has remained so strong and, and well operated. And Linda mentioned the video on GTV. I do want to mention uh, Lucas Olson, the producer of that yeah. uh, video on that project. So thanks, Lucas. Yes. The T and Totes was. I was actually shocked with how uh, successful it was because, you know, the first time you ever do an event, you never know, but you filled right. Cascades Manor and the manor looked great. It was beautiful, just a beautiful event. And, and our intent with this event was to have um, an event that provided for more intimate storytelling um, that would appeal to our, our closest investors and members. Um, we do an incredible job with our annual party for a cause and that event, the intent is really to celebrate and show our gratitude to our members and investors. But the Tea and Totes event was an opportunity for us to, to tell our story more, to talk more about the impact we have, uh, particularly on children in the community as we go into the camp season. Um, and so the video was just a perfect fit for this event. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so the uh, society is very busy, and I believe uh, you're in the process of uh, encouraging folks to join the society. Always, Always. encouraging folks to join our society, and uh, we are growing, and uh, we're just finding new ways of recognizing Jackson's history all the time, and we're very grateful for our partnerships that have helped to um, kind of broadcast that mm -hmm. to, to the community, so it's just a good a good collaboration all the way around. Thank you. The mm -hmm. next chapter of the Y, as you mentioned, uh, which, of course, the video will have to be a living document as yeah. the history evolves, but it's the groundbreaking for the new Y. Right. We anticipate that we'll begin construction later this summer. Um, it's been a long journey, as you know, <laughs> and as Linda knows, and certainly mm -hmm. one that will be fun to document. Yeah. Um, over the course of the next few years and, and looking back over the last few years, uh, the support from the community has been absolutely tremendous. Uh, most recently, um, as we put the project out to bid, uh, we were really happy with the response from local uh, subcontractors in the bidding mm -hmm. process. 
and um, before we begin construction, we even hope to engage a few additional um, local subcontractors as we're looking at um, putting out some of the some of the smaller packages again to get some more bidder engagement. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be a phenomenal facility, and it's just amazing uh, what the designers have been able to do. Um, in terms of redevelopment of an existing facility, and um, it'll it'll look and feel brand new, mm -hmm. um, without encumbering the organization with long-term debt. Um, those who have been on this journey with us know mm -hmm. that our intent was to build a brand new facility, mm -hmm. and um, as a result of COVID and um, all of the um, all of the shortages. Um, in that period of time, the, the cost of the new build went from roughly 25 million to roughly 33 million. Mm -hmm. And so that's um, when the board of directors went back to the drawing board, so to speak, and um, have been working very closely with a firm called Grow um, that specializes in building YMCAs. And um, we're just committed to being um, good stewards of the funds invested by members of our community and our partners um, and um, you know taking bringing the community into the fold and walking down this path with us um, it'll be challenging um, being under construction and maintaining operations as much as we possibly can um, but after being on this path for so long we're confident that our members are are so excited that they're they're ready to make some mm. exceptions maybe in their daily routine to be able to support us in this process and really excited about our facility on-site facility partners too um, Henry Ford um, I wanted to say Allegiance Henry Ford Health System um, leasing space in the new facility and partnering with us on some new health programs for the community and big brothers big sisters um, it, it feels like such a great match to be able to partner with them for um, youth programs and volunteer recruitment. So we're really excited and just uh, watch us closely for information. We'll, you know, things will be happening pretty, pretty soon. And, and once it gets started, I think things are going to unfold really quickly. All right. Uh, more to come. Stay tuned. That will be the next mm -hmm. step. You've done site work and some building demo already, but the official groundbreaking. Uh, still to be set, but sometime soon. Coming very soon. And Linda, you've got a um, project on County Farm, uh, mm -hmm. that history. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like your next uh, mm -hmm. historical marker project. Uh, yes, um, uh, David Elwell and Ken Wyatt really took the lead in the historical marker for um, our county historical marker for the poor farm. And then um, I thought it'd be a good idea to also get a state marker. So that was recently approved by the state commission and the, the marker is being made and probably it will be unveiled maybe sometime this coming spring to add to the documentation of this fascinating piece of Jackson's history. Also been in our community since, um, gosh, 1837, I believe the property was set aside for the least of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, all this left today is a cemetery, but we're gonna commemorate it. Awesome, I know one day in the future there'll be a historical marker uh, in the front of, uh, it'll say, this is where Linda Haas lived. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Oh. We as a community yeah, are community. so fortunate to have Linda uh, champion well, this work and the preservation of mm -hmm. these stories and, um, you know, to be inspired by the people it's, before us that made Jackson yeah. so unique. Yeah, they're the heroes. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're just, we're just following in their trail. They're the heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great to see you both. Thanks for the um, project and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Haas from the Jackson County, Michigan Historical Society and Jackson YMCA's Shana Tello.